people making groups all around the world, and they've really taken into an art form. I mean, some of these things are really beautiful. All right, so this leads me to the third type of evidence I'm going to talk about today, which is abduction stories. So, so in 1997, uh, CNN did a poll that said, and 50% of respondents said they believed aliens had abducted humans. Uh, a 1991 poll concluded that about 2% of people had had experiences that were very similar to alien encounters. You can even buy alien abduction insurance today. It costs about $150 for $1 million of coverage. Of course, you're going to be burned to prove actually lies with the claimant. Now, I looked into this, and it turns out two people actually successfully claimed this. But according to the, one of the insurance companies that offers it, it's usually the feeble minded who buy these policies. All right, so here's a typical alien abduction story. I woke up in the middle of the night and everything was strangely lit. At the end of my bed was a four foot high gray alien. Its thin body supported a huge head with two enormous slanted black eyes. It compelled me telepathically to follow and led me into a spaceship along corridors to an examination room. I was forced to lie down while they painfully examined me, extracted sperm, and implanted something in my nose. When I eventually found myself back in bed, several hours had gone by. Now, how many of these stories can we just write off as either hoaxes or the raving of lunatics? Well, this fellow, John Mack, he's a medical doctor and psychoanalyst. He even went won a Pulitzer Prize for biography. He spent over 10 years interviewing hundreds of abductees. And although he initially suspected that they might be mentally ill, he ended up concluding that the, the vast majority of them have no mental illness. And he also felt that they were actually being truthful in their descriptions. Now, as a side note, he also decided that because of this, we might as well take their claims at face value and that aliens might be communicating from, through some other dimension. But is there another explanation? Could it be possible that these people really are sane, and they really are, do think they're telling the truth generally, but that they're actually hallucinating these experiences? Perhaps the answer is yes. So it turns out one study in 2000 found that over 39% of people have reported at least some kind of hallucinatory experience. Furthermore, more than 5% reported having visual hallucinations. Now, a hallucination is not an illusion. An illusion is where you, you misperceive something. A hallucination is where you see shit that just isn't there. <laughs> so there are many, uh, so that by that, those numbers, we should expect at least 10 million Americans to have had a hallucinatory experiences. Uh, where, sorry, visual hallucinatory experiences. And many things cause hallucin uh, hallucinations. Poisoning, high fever, sleep deprivation, drugs, seizures, but the most interesting one for our purposes is this one known as sleep paralysis. So sleep paralysis is a condition where you wake up in the morning and you're paralyzed. You can't move your body. But it often actually comes with other symptoms that are very common. A feeling of a presence in the room, a sense of danger, vivid hallucinations, and often feeling sexually aroused. And does this remind you of anything? Well, let's consider the classic alien abduction story. Aliens enter your bedroom, and you sense a presence. Aliens take you captive, you're paralyzed. You're afraid of the aliens, you sense danger. The aliens take you on their ship, you vividly hallucinate, and the aliens perform sexual experiments on you, and you feel sexually aroused. So, sleep paralysis has been described in many different ways in different folklore of different cultures. In Newfoundland, it's something called a hag who sits on your chest. In Africa, the devil on your back. In Vietnam, being held down by ghosts. And in Japan, being fastened with metal. I'm guessing that's the Japanese one. <laughs> so the interpretation of sleep paralysis seems to depend on the culture that you're in. And in America, this cultural context includes the idea of visitation by alien beings. So my talk's about to finish, but I want to leave with a few final thoughts. Final thought number one. In order for data to truly be evidence for aliens, we really have to be able to eliminate all the other plausible explanations. And that's really hard to do, generally. Second, if you can't explain something that you've seen or heard about, that really doesn't mean that nobody can explain it. <laughs> if you've ever gone to a magic show, you probably don't know how those tricks are done, but if you bring in a professional magician, they'll be able to tell you pretty quickly. So if you hear about some weird shit that you can't explain, go talk to an expert and see how they can explain it. Final thought number three. It's estimated that there are more than 100 billion galaxies in the universe. 
and that these galaxies have billions of planets each. That means that there's more than 100 billion billion potential places for alien life to have evolved. It would be pretty shocking if it didn't happen even once. I haven't heard it three twice. <laughs> I said alien life. So, final thought number four. Technologically advanced alien life isn't the only life, uh, isn't the only alien life that can visit us. Could it be possible that on a meteor hitting Earth, we could actually find little alien microbes or something like that? Well, it's extremely cold in space, and there, there is a lot of heat when the meteor enters our atmosphere, and it would have to, this life would have to survive for a really long time. So it hardly seems possible. But then you find out about this little creature, the water bear. These one millimeter long creatures have survived in the vacuum of space. Astronauts brought these things into space and left them there and they lived. Furthermore, they can withstand temperatures ranging from close to absolute zero up to 300 degrees Fahrenheit. They've lived a decade without any water. They can resist a thousand times more radiation than your average human being. So perhaps some kind of alien creature that's like a water bear might actually survive on a meteor. So one day we might actually see uh, alien life. And finally, if you have wanted to find out any more information, you can check out our website, askamathematician.com. Thank you.